Oh, where am I? Oh, I feel like I got hit by a Mack truck. Hey, Doc, what's going on? Hey there, everything's okay. You're in the hospital. I got some bad news, but I got some really good news. Hey, well, tell me straight. What's the bad news? Yeah, so the bad news... You got hosed by Najee Harris. I mean, it was pretty bad. You're trending on Twitter, number one. And I was just like, oh my gosh, what a stiffer. I mean, killed ya. Dang, bro, dude, teammates are gonna kill me, man. What's the good news? Oh yeah, yeah, the good news. There's some really good news. Najee Harris was on my fantasy team. I was like, yeah, let's go. Dang, bro, I forgot to start him in my league. Ah. Nobody was actually harmed while making this video, but... Oh, it's Najee Harris, look out. The throw it, side on pass. Najee Harris, oh! I feel like defenders almost like, they duck on purpose. They're just that way they can get out of the face. They don't get jabbed in the face. Anyway, I love Najee Harris. What is happening? What is going on? How are you doing today? I hope you're having a great day on playoff day. Of course, the playoffs. That's right. It's the playoff day. We got Cincinnati. Hopefully, I'm pulling the upset over Alabama. And Roll Tide. Roll Tide. And then, of course, Georgia taking on the Wolverines. Going to be a great one. We'll see how those games fare out. But we got something bigger to talk about. The Pittsburgh Steelers trying to find the future. They got some areas that they have to look at. We're going to go over this roster. See what's clowning, see what's good, what's bad, what areas they need to improve upon going into next season for this Pittsburgh Steeler team. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Let me know your thoughts and your opinions on it. If you want, you don't have to, but holla at me. I always like the, the feedback and seeing where you're rocking with it. And let's start with the quarterback position with Big Ben, where the clock doesn't stop. And I've actually seen Big Ben, not Big Ben Roethlisberger, but the clock over there in London. It's pretty crazy anyway. But back to Big Ben Roethlisberger, who is going to be playing in his final game at Heinz Field, more than likely this week in Cle or versus Cleveland. Going to be a little bit of a sad time, I know, for some Pittsburgh Steeler fans there. But at the same time, got to be looking towards the future with this team and the great job Ben Roethlisberger has done throughout the years. I know he's gotten a lot of flack over the past couple of them, but he's been a very, very good quarterback for this team. So we got to pay some respect there and homage. And, you know, going into the offseason, though, looking at it from a roster standpoint, we have to look at the upgrade of this quarterback position. And then you got Mason Rudolph, Dwayne Haskins. I probably don't want them as the future of their quarterback position, but it is what I might have rather have Derek Watt starting there at the quarterback spot, even though obviously I just have him listed as the fullback. But you have Derek Watt, got to put out the fullback there, of course, too. That's your quarterback position. Definitely going to be a high priority area that we look to target, whether it's free agency or the draft. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we get into the draft. On to the running back position. We're in good shape. We don't need to talk about this. First rounder Najee Harris out of Alabama. This dude is a monster. Yeah, he doesn't have the blazing speed. He's not a home run hitter. It's fine. People say, well, he doesn't have his burst. Order. Look, that's not his game. This dude runs you over. He he earns that extra two or three yards that you're not normally going to find out of a lot of these running backs, not to mention he's one of the best receiving backs in the NFL. I like Najee Harris. He's locked and loaded there. I know you, the deficiencies. He makes up for him in different ways in his game. On to the rest of this running back group. You got Benny Snail. You also have Kalen Balaj and Anthony McFarland. Balaj is a free agent over the Bellagio there. We'll see if he comes back or not. Uh, that's not a big deal. Benny Snail is an okay number two. It, I, they probably need to look at trying to get Anthony McFarland going or even finding someone later in the draft as maybe like a speedster compliment to Najee Harris. It's not a huge deal though. Maybe pick someone up in free agency or just rock with Benny Snell as your number two. It's fine. Not a big deal. Najee Harris is out there like 95% of the snaps anyway. On to the receiver position and the tight end group now. Let's start out with the receivers. They're really good in terms of their number one and number two. Uh, De Deontay Johnson is a number one receiver. He's one of the best separators in the NFL period. Just go Watch the All-22 on this guy. He separates at a high level, and he's improved his drop rate a lot from his rookie season, too. Uh, catching, I know he did some, like, he's worked on some drills or whatever with the tennis balls, I think. That's really helped him out. He has been a very good receiver, already over 1,000 yards this season, and could be much higher if Big Ben was a little bit more accurate this season. But that's okay. Chase Claypool's also been on that kind of end where it's missed some deep balls there to Chase Claypool. So it's been kind of a struggle. And Claypool's also had some issues this season. We can, you know, I know Minnesota, when that Minnesota game people are going to talk about. But uh, besides that, it is what it is. Claypool's still a really good receiver. I think he has an upside, too, to be that perimeter X style of receiver for this team. He's got the, you know, the crazy athletic traits, too. 
Juju Smith-Schuster is going to be one to keep an eye on in free agency. He might come back. I think there's a good chance that they do bring Juju back, mainly because I think he loves Pittsburgh, and I think that he's got the vibes where he's not going to really get a huge contract either. It may benefit him to take a less size contract and to come back here to Pittsburgh. And then you also have Ray Ray McLeod, who's been a you know solid fill in there. I mean, it's nothing crazy. He's a free agent. Anthony Miller, who they picked up, and you got James Washington as another fourth receiver on the outside on the perimeter. He's wanting to trade. I don't think he'll be back next season, which is fine. I don't think they need to. If I had to guess, they'll bring back one of these guys. It's going to be Juju Smith-Schuster if I had to take a guess, but you never do know on that situation. You also have Cody White, Spartan up, Michigan State Spartan there as well as the receiving group. But in terms of your one and two, you're in a good position. Maybe we need to go ahead and find a third receiver if Juju is not back. Or if he's only on a short one-year deal, we'll have to take a look at finding maybe an eventual slot receiver replacement there. Or just nothing else, a number three, number four style of dude. On to the tight end position where they're in a good position. Pat Fryer Muth. Muth! I know, rocking and rolling there. And you also got Zach Gentry, the big dude, man. This guy's a great blocker. And yeah, that, that one-two punch with Fryer Muth and Gentry is really solid even if Ebron doesn't come back he's been injured on IR lately so it's fine like Gentry and Fryermuth to me is a really good one-two punch Fryermuth has been stepping up more and more in the receiving game I know again going back to that Minnesota game had that potential touchdown that Minnesota game was so so good Casey game I watched that one unfortunately bit of a rough one we'll talk about that throughout this and then i watched let's see green bay i've seen the uh, cleveland game and i've also seen the cincinnati games where the offense line really struggled probably most in that cincinnati game we'll talk about that as well here in a minute but overall receiving position tight end position let's look at finding another receiver and then that's probably going to be a mid-round need tight end wise we're in good shape not worried about it pick up another free agent as your number three tight end or a late round draft pick Quarterback so far, obviously going to be another area of need. Now onto this offensive line, which is where everyone's going to want to talk about this offensive line. What do we do with this offensive line? It's got to be completely rehauled, right? Actually, I have different opinions. Going back and watching this offensive line, I've really taken a step to trying to figure out the best way forward to build this offensive line while also trying to figure out which positions I think are going to be good for the future. One thing I do want to talk about, though, is Chris Morgan how the impact of the new offensive line coach change is going to affect this team. And this could be just an interim thing. They may look in the offseason and try to find a new offensive line coach with Adrian Clem going over to Oregon abruptly, which was an interesting move there. However, Chris is going to come in and take over. We'll see how he does over the coming weeks. I am going to keep a close eye on this offensive line, see how the development works on a little bit more. You've had some injuries, and that's been a big part of it. Let's go through this from the left to right side, because I, I want to talk about every single one of these guys in detail, or at least in a little bit of detail. I keep it as simple as possible. I don't want to go too many details, but Dan Moore, I was not the biggest fan out of Texas A&M. He's definitely come in and shown some flashes. I would actually like to move him inside the guard. I think his feet and his footwork is still very much lacking to the point where I don't think I would like him better at the guard position. I think he would be better in more of a phone booth setting. That's my opinion. Ultimately, he does have the tools, though, to play as a tackle and to be an eventual left tackle or right tackle for this team. So however you want to see that, he's shown a lot of flashes, but at times there's also been some games where he's just gotten torn apart. Uh, Cincinnati has really cleaned his clock. Trey Hendrickson has not been too kind to this guy. That's fine. I mean, Trey Hendrickson is one of the best pass, pass, pass rushers in the NFL right now. He's been very, very good and very, very problematic for most teams who go up against him. But Dan Moore had been back and forth. I would... I don't know if I feel confident as him going into next season as this team starter. I want to at least look at either bringing in a veteran like a Charles Leno or drafting someone else at that left tackle position and moving Dan Moore inside the guard. So we'll do something of that nature. Kevin Dotson, I really do like. And this offensive line, whether you like it or not, they went through their best time period between like week five and week 10 when Dotson and this offense line was kind of gelling. They were kind of getting some sort of chemistry together. Then Dotson went down. Ever since Dotson's gone down, things have been problematic even more on that interior especially. And Dotson is a key piece. Him and Trey Turner have been huge for this offensive line. Without these two guys, I think it's a big, big problem. Keep him for sure. He is your starter for the future at left guard. Hopefully he comes in next year, improves a little bit more. 
take that next third year leap, but I definitely like him a lot as your left guard, locked and loaded. You also have John Leglue, who's come in and stepped up and played pretty dang good at that left guard position for the most part, other than the Minnesota Vikings game where he got and got obliterated a couple of times there. Uh, did watch that game too, and that was a that was a really well. I did say that one earlier, but that was a really good game. I, I, that was one of my favorite games of the season. I was so hoping Pittsburgh would come back and win that one. But on to the rest of this offense line. So I think they're good at left guard position. Center Kendrick Green. I like Kendrick Kendrick Green a whole ton. I think he is the future of this team at the center position. He has struggled and big time at, at certain moments of the season, but he's also shown those flashes that you saw at Illinois. He is a people mover. That's what he does. If he can improve more as a pass protector and also be more consistent, there have been times too where he gets to the second level and just he gets lost or he's not able to lock on. He's missing blocks. He's getting bulldozed by you know Casey and Chris Jones this past week. You name it, there's been times where he's definitely struggled all around in his game. There's a lot of inconsistencies with his play strength. There's been a problem. And the dude is strong. Like, he's not a weak guy. I don't know what's going on right now. He's a rookie, so we got to give him time. And remember, you got Dan Moore, 23 years old. Kevin Dotson, 25 years old. Kendrick, Kendrick Green, 23 years old. Try to turn a 28 Shakuma Awogafor, 24 years old, who just turned 24 a couple months ago. This is a young offensive line. Ultimately, just stemming in more youth is not all going to you know, solve the problems here. I think they need to go out with some of that money that they have in free agency, which we'll talk about here too. They've got like $177 million, not next year, but the season after that, because they're like the New England Patriots going into this next season. They don't have a whole ton of guys locked in for the future of this team. So they're going to be able to spend some money and lock in some key positions potentially on this offensive line. Uh, now going on to Troy Turner, who's been one of the, the most stable pieces on this offensive line. You have to bring him back. He has been the best player on this offensive line, bar none, consistently throughout the season. Him and Kevin Dotson. Your guard position is not bad. LeGlue can be a decent number three guard. Ultimately, we talked about this. I think Dan Moore going into the guard position would be a really good option. Uh, Chakuma Awofor, Chucks over there at the right tackle position. I want to talk about him now. He has been surprisingly much better as the season has gone along. He, to me, is a guy that you want to keep. He's 24 years old in his fourth season. They drafted him young from Western Michigan, and he was a development project coming out. Like, we kind of knew this, his third round selection. I like his potential path in his second year, full season as a starter here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Going into year number three, I definitely want to put him, bring him back on like a two year, $12 million deal. Do something like that. Kind of what they did with Zach Manor. They gave him a two year, some $10 million deal, a $12 million deal, something like that. He hasn't really seen the field with him, mainly because of his versatility. Only he's basically a right tackle, or maybe a left tackle. He is a tackle and they've really had problems on the interior throughout this year. That's probably why Zach Banner hasn't seen the laps and whatnot. And Chucks, as we were saying, I think he's been one of the, I think he's been their best tackle on this roster. And you want to make sure to bring him back because I think he's got so much potential. Only being 24, very young. You do not want to lose Chakuma Awogafor. Same thing we talked about with uh, Tria Turner. Bring those guys back. This offensive line it may not be as bad as people think, but it all hinges on one big thing. Kendrick Green. He is the key for me in this offensive line going into next season. If Kendrick Green can come out, make those improvements, improve his play strength, get better as a pass protector, this offensive line will be really a lot better next year, and they'll be able to do what they want to do. Mark my words. Kendra Green is the key to this offensive line, in my opinion, other than staying healthy, of course. You got to bring back some dudes, but Kendra Green, he is the key, in my opinion. Let me know what you think on that, but that is my view. You got JC Hasenauer, who's going to probably be starting this week for Kendra Green, who is injured right now. You also have BJ Finley as a backup there. Joe Higgs also played on at left guard position. He's played left tackle, right tackle. I believe he's even played some right guard snaps. Other than center, he's played everywhere on that offensive line. That is their offensive line, though, and I wanted to go through that and kind of give you my view on it. That's kind of what I'm seeing. I think, if anything, let's find a left tackle in free agency. Maybe find some experience in free agency. The best offensive lineman available that you can bring in. You do have some money, so if you can find someone like a Taron Armstead, oh, boo yeah, I bring in, I'm bringing him in. I'm trying to do whatever I can to solidify this offensive line, but that is my opinion on it. Overall, we're going to be looking at offensive line still. We're going to be looking at receiver. We're going to be looking at the quarterback position. So going on to the defense now, we're going to start out with the cornerback position, which I think is the biggest problem on this defense side of the ball. Cameron Sutton, to me, needs to move back into the slot if possible. He's played his best ball there. He does have the tools, especially in this off cover two that they play here right now in Pittsburgh. But to me, he is better in the slot. I want to move him back there if we can. Joe Hayden has hinted this is going to be probably 
hopefully his last season with Pittsburgh. We'll see if it is. He's been very, very good for Pittsburgh in his time here. Definitely been able to come in and shore up the secondary. You also have James Pierre, who's a quality number four corner. I really don't want him as a starter. That is going to be an area we need to look upgrade on the outside because I do think Joe Hayden will probably be gone after this season. Sutton, I want to move back into the slot. Mullet's not been great as a slot corner here for them. Definitely been picked on when he's been out there. Killer Witherspoon. I like a Killer Witherspoon quite a bit. Now, he's been streaky. There's been some times like, but I mean, if you go back to that Minnesota game, like he was literally the, one of the reasons why they had a chance to, to tie that game. Big interceptions in that one. And ultimately that game, you know, at the final, at the end there, making that one big play to give Pittsburgh the chance to come back and to tie it. But Witherspoon is someone I would have bring back. You probably can get him back on not super inexpensive deals, maybe like a two-year, six million a season, something like that for Witherspoon. And you can lock him in as one of your outside starters, Sutton in the slot. We need to find another outside corner. And probably you're going to also need to pick it up in free agency, see if you can get some a starter. Because we're going to have to draft someone and hope that we can, you know, maybe have uh, those guys as your starters. But we'll look at that because I do... I do think Mullet, you got to upgrade there. Sutton would be better uh, to put back into the slot. And then at the safety position, you're in a pretty good spot. Like Edmonds has played decent enough. Ultimately, is he an elite safety? No, but he's not bad. And I think he can get, you can roll with him if you give him a contract. Now, I'm not giving him a huge payday. I'm telling you right now. At most, I'm giving him a six million a season. Five million is kind of what I would want to do. Four to five million. But Terrell Edmonds, Carl Joseph, who's also a free agent, he hasn't played a whole ton, been on kind of the practice COVID right now. Uh, you got Minka Fitzpatrick, who's got another season, of course, under a contract, but he's going to be someone who we have to think about. Are we going to pay for the future? I would imagine that they will, but that is something also we need to think about. So probably looking at least one safety, one corner, outside corner. So an outside corner and a, a deep safety is something we are going to be targeting in the draft, nor will as that developer, that, you know, backup sort of dude there, rotational safety. He also plays a little bit in the slot for this team. He was like, what, a later round draft pick at Oklahoma. He's played a lot, actually. He has played a good amount. Not the biggest fan of his game. I think he is more of a depth piece for this team. Now onto the linebacker position, where actually going into this linebacker position, it's hard to want to make a huge upgrade with the other needs on this roster. Yes, it would be ideal if this team could go out and get a good linebacker in like the second or third round, but they just have so many other pressing needs. You've invested in with a Buddy Johnson. Hopefully he can work out the Texas A&M fourth round selection last year. You got Joe Schobert, who they've given a pretty sizable contract to. And he's a quality linebacker. He's not an elite linebacker or nothing, but he's fine. He'll get the job done. Devin Bush, not quite the play you'd want, but he's also been dealing with some injuries. So maybe full season this next year, he can get better. But, you know, you can keep saying that. You don't know. Uh, he's been a good blitzer. Whenever I see him blitzing, he's he's pretty dang on point. Like that Green Bay game, man, he was really good in that one. He's been really struggling ultimately as a coverage linebacker. Tackling, he just gets lost in the dirt. He just doesn't quite have the instincts right now that you're looking for. But he has the athletic profile. Him and Joe Schobert is a good combination. Buddy Johnson there. Ulysses Gilbert, another dude there who's still under contract. You got Robert Spillen, Marcus Allen, and Miles Kilbrew is kind of like a hybrid safety linebacker there two on this roster. Those three guys are free agents. So is it a huge area that I'm going to look to invest in? No, mainly because I don't think it's their biggest area of need on this roster. On to the defensive line now. They're in a great position on the edge. Alex Highsmith and TJ Watt, it's a really good group. Highsmith has done a great job too this year in his full year starting. Do like his game. I think he's going to be a good quality number two. They could use a little bit of depth. Probably going to be something you look at more in free agency. Derek Tuska, maybe a guy who you never know, right? He's, he's definitely a sleeper. North Dakota State guy, uh, small school dude, kind of developing here, coming over from Denver, definitely. A potential to be a number three, number four edge, you never do know. Probably still something you could look at as a later round need, probably that they'll do, or in free agency. Taco Carlton's been fine when he's played. Decent quality rotational piece. And you also got Christian Kuntz, who hasn't really played. And of course, like I said, we know TJ Watson is insane. We don't need to boost his ego even more because he's, he's going to probably hit a 20 sack season this year. He's unbelievable. He's just crazy, man. He's a whew, man. Speaking of crazy, Cameron Hayward, also really, really good. One of the most underrated interior defense linemen still in the NFL. Probably uh, him and uh, Chris Jones, you could make the argument, are the second best interior defense linemen, of course, other than Aaron Donald. We know Aaron Donald is probably the best player in the NFL. But Stephon Tewitt is 
been injured for the entirety of the season. That's been brutal for them. So when he get when they get him back, that's going to be a big boost to this defensive line. Austin Al-Alu has also been injured. That has also been a kind of a blow there. Not a huge blow, but definitely something for that defensive line. He's a good quality nose tackle after, what was it, turning down Tennessee and coming back to Pittsburgh. You got Isaiah Bugs who kind of filled in there. And they also picked up Montrevious Adams from, from the New England Patriots. And he's actually played pretty well, too, in the games he's shown up for. So he's, you know, again, whether or not they bring him back, they'll probably look a little bit more nose tackle. Mainly, because maybe we could look at that in the late rounds on the defensive line. I don't think it's a really big need. Alo Alo is getting a little bit older. He's going to be like, what, 35 next season. Still under contract. Bugs, younger there, who they drafted a couple seasons ago, I think, or something like that. But yeah, he's a young dude. And then uh, other than that, depth-wise, you got Chris Warmley, who stepped in for Stefan Tewitt. He's been fine. He's a good player. Good rotational piece. No, nothing too bad about that. Henry Mondeo is fine you know you know he probably may not even be on the roster next year and then you also have carlos davis isaiah loudermick milk who they just drafted to this past season out of wisconsin so he's fine i think you can roll with those guys but maybe you'll look at a backup nose tackle or something like that nothing nothing too crazy on that defensive line overall defensively wise we're going to look to address the coverage unit we're going to get an outside corner we're going to look at the safety position maybe get a get some help at the linebacker position for special teams because special teams unit could be better going into next year so recapping those team needs real quick on the offense side of the ball you have the quarterback position of course we got to find the eventual replacement for Big Ben Roethlisberger. Offensive line in general, but my vision is trying to find maybe a left tackle moving Dan Moore inside a guard, but you can view that in totally different ways. Even if such, Dan Moore can be a good quality tackle potentially into his second year. Maybe we just need to find offensive line help, the best available offensive line and roll with that. And then slot position at the receiver, we just need more depth if nothing else because we do have like, what, four free agent receivers, so that's going to be something we look at. And then on the defense side of the ball, if we were just saying the secondary we're going to try to add in some pieces to really solidify that group and to help out because they've got an elite defensive line especially with to coming back next year watt i mean hayward it's really solid highsmith that's a good defensive line if we can improve that say secondary in general that's going to be an, a potential top five level defense again so here we go it's draft time and the steelers are ready to go as we get pumped up the terrible towels are flying roger goodell's coming out and we're getting pumped up with them draft picks are pretty standard as the bill noel draft room which is legendary man mike tomlin's sitting there discussing who we're about to take uh, it's gonna be a crazy one but here's their draft picks no six rounder which is fine but uh with their first round selection at pick number 15 we are taking sam howell the quarterback out of north carolina to me and i know what you're thinking well the pittsburgh steelers they haven't they don't take first round quarterbacks they haven't needed to they have ben roethlisberger on the roster so it's like you don't have to take a first round quarterback and i know there's been rumors well maybe mike tomlin wants more of a veteran presence i'm not gonna listen to that that can be coach speak there's a lot of times people will say one thing you know with kyle shanahan maybe we didn't think that that was gonna happen he ended up taking a quarterback in the first round trading up and doing it bill belichick did the same well not trading up but took a quarterback maybe people thought he was gonna go out and get a veteran you don't know what's gonna happen i think quarterback is the most pressing need that this team needs to do and sam howell's gonna be able to come in and fix some of the problems that this team has really had this season and we talk about Najee Harris and the fact that he's faced the most yards or he's had the most yards after contact and also he's been hit behind the line of scrimmage the most out of any NFL running back so if you bring in someone like Sam Howell who has been able to hit the deep ball is going to make defenses respect the deep ball is going to really help out the run game just in general because if Sam Howell is able to hit Chase Claypool whereas Ben Roethlisberger especially early on in the season, struggled a lot hitting Chase Claypool or Deontay Johnson on those deep balls, James Washington multiple times. You get Sam Howell in here, he's going to be able to respect, the defense is going to have to respect that deep ball more and more. You got good receivers, Sam Howell is going to be able to come in here, and their pass protection has been a lot better too than people think. Their pass protection from an offensive line standpoint is not terrible, so it's not like you're putting Sam Howell in a terrible offensive line. Plus, we talk about they have a ton of cap space for the future. They've got like 177 mil that they're going to be able to throw to like offensive line or key positions for the future going into you know a couple years down the line so a lot of guys that they're going to be able to lock up and help out sam howell or whichever quarterback they bring in but he's going to be able to come in and ultimately i think bring some dynamic ability to this offense that's why i'm going with sam howell the quarterback out of north carolina i think he is the best day one starter too can come in He's got the experience, three years of playing at North Carolina, going to be that tried, true, and tested dude to be able to come in here and lead this team. On to our second round pick, we're going Martin Emerson, the corner here out of Mississippi State. 
He's going to be able to be that outside corner next to a killer Witherspoon or if you want to keep Cameron Sutton and go out and get a slot player or something like that, you can do that too. That's another idea. But you're going to be able to bring in Martin Emerson as a eventual starting corner for this outside group. Big dude too, six foot one, 200 pounds, physical, feisty dude on the outside in this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Just definitely something, a huge area of need. I know offense line's a big area of need, but I think corner is such a huge area of need too. I think if anything, they need more youth on that cornerback group, whereas the offensive line, they've got quite a bit of youth. We can also address it maybe with this third round selection here. Jackson Kirkland is off the board, the offensive tackle from Washington, who also could come into guard, like whether or not you feel like Jackson Kirkland could be the guard for this team, or you want to put Dan Moore as your guard. I like one of them to be a guard. I think Kirkland is a better at tackle. I do think he would be a better at the left tackle position. He has been, other than the Michigan game, he has been really, really good for Washington. And I think he's being a little underrated now at this point. So Jackson Kirkland, to me, if you're getting him in the third round, it is an absolute steal slam dunk pick to be able to protect whoever is the quarterback for the future of this team. Moving on now here to the fourth round, we're going Khalil Shakir, the wide receiver out of Boise State. And this is a dude that's going to be able to fit right in. I think he projects so, so well to the slot. He can be that Juju Smith-Schuster replacement and he's going to rack up yards in the slot with this group. I mean, it's just, a, it would be a real, I think in terms of overall what you have with Claypool as that deep X receiver, Deontay Johnson as a separator, Khalil Shakir, also pretty dang good separator, but he's just really, really good with his feel. Good catcher, doesn't drop passes. Going to be a reliable slot player for this team in the future. Just solidify that receiving core. Now on to our fifth round selection, Vontae Davis out of Utah. He's been an underrated player there in that Utah defense. Not talked about a whole ton with some of the studs they have. Of course, Devin Lloyd there, but he's going to be able to provide more depth. If nothing else, if you bring Terrell Edmonds back, he can be that third, fourth safety, however you want to look at it with Trey Norwood. On to our next selection here at pick number, round number seven, pick number 222. It's going to be Dion Noville, the defense a tackle out of Mean Green, the North Texas machine. Here, I don't know, trying to work that out, but Devin Noville, underrated player out of North North Texas. I do like his game a lot. And he's built like a brick, man. He's absolutely stout. Going to be great as for this team and the way they like play and then put that nose tackle. I think he's going to be a perfect fit for this team. On to their final selection here, Devin Harper, the linebacker. He's going to be a good special teamer. That's the way I look at it. He can come in and help them out on special teams and just be more depth at the linebacker position. I thought about going even guard at the spot too, or, but I went ahead and took a linebacker here to round it all out. So let's go ahead and recap everything that we were able to do, starting with the quarterback position. Sam Howell, now the future quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers here. I like him a lot as a day one starter. He's going to be able to plug right in and help this team get to where they want to go. And he's got a lot more upside than Big Ben Roethlisberger right now. And I think what he can do can potentially get this team over the edge. This is not a team. They may not be rebuilding as much as people think because of that cap space. Similar situation we were saying to the New England Patriots. They're going to be able to go out and sign some key additions, not to mention they still have some stud talent like Chase Claypool, like Deontay Johnson, Pat Fryermouth, who I think is going to be really good, Najee Harris. If they can sign some offensive linemen, do, with, do some certain things, this team may not be as bad, plus the studs on defense that they have, right? TJ Watt, Cam Jordan, Stephon Tewitt, you name it, right? Minka Fitzpatrick, they have some guys. So it's not like this team is in a full rebuild mode. Sam Howell going to be able to hopefully come in and really take control of this offense and really go from there. On to the receiver position where we add in Khalil Shakir as maybe the eventual slot receiver, just more depth, if nothing else, if you lose some of those guys. Again, I'm just projecting guys or whatever losing. They'll probably bring some of these dudes back. On the offensive line, now here's the most controversial thing, I guess, if you want to put it that way. We have Jackson Kirkland starting at the left tackle position. Dan Moore is going to be moving over to guard here be a backup between these guys, or he can compete at left tackle with Jackson Kirkland. However you look at it, one of those two guys can come in. I feel a lot better about that situation. If you lose Chakuma Wogafor, then also Dan Moore has that versatility, I think, to move over to right tackle position. Or what you could do as well is draft Abraham Lucas, okay? If you lose Chucks, then go out and draft Abraham Lucas instead in the third round. Those are kind of my two options on how you just depends on what you do in free agency. But that's kind of what I'm trying to do to solidify this offense line because I do like Tri Turner. I like Kevin Dotson. I think Kendrick Green is the key for this team going forward in that interior position. 
in his development. So if you're Pittsburgh, you are really, really investing in this guy and what he can do and what he can bring to your team. Ducks on your right tackle position. I like that offensive line. It's a young group, but it's a group that could be really, really good for the future with the right development. And then that is it. That's really all we did on the offense side of the ball. Now on the defense side of the ball, what we've been able to do, we bring in Martin Emerson as that eventual replacement here at the cornerback position on the outside next to potentially a killer Witherspoon as your one-two punch on the outside. And then you have Cameron Sutton there on the slot where I feel like that's just going to be able to be his best position going forward. And I like this defense and what they have as a really good unit together there and bring in someone in free agency too. So that way if Witherspoon gets injured or if Martin Emerson isn't ready day number one, I do think he is one of the more pro ready corners entering the draft. I don't think he has the upside of some of the other guys like Andrew Booth, but I think that he may be one of the best, the best plug and play style of dudes. And then on the secondary, we had Invante Davis as some more depth behind Terrell Edmonds. If you lose Edmonds, then maybe safety is a little bit earlier of a need, but we got Vontae Davis assuming Edmonds is going to be back there. Uh, Davis can be more depth behind Fitzpatrick, Edmonds, and Norwood. And then linebacker just adding in some more, uh, you know, special teams with uh, Harper and then Noville uh, as well on that nose tackle position for the future with Alo Alo getting a little bit older. Bugs is fine, but I think in this great name too. But I think Noville has a lot of upside there as that nose tackle for this defense. So that is really it. I mean, offensively and defensively. Let me know what you think. Where did we screw up? Where did we go wrong? I know there's going to be a lot of different opinions on the quarterback position, on the offensive line. That's going to be my biggest like viewpoint on that. So that's kind of where I was trying to debate what I wanted to do. So that's really what I, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that. So let me know what you think. Other than that, though, that's Pittsburgh Steelers. Watch out for Najee Harris. He's coming for you, man. Pow! He's about to stiff you, but I hope you have a really good day. I'll talk to you later.